Okay, so our renders are now done, and if you look at your images folder, you should be able to see two new folders. One of them has occlusion, and the other one is wireframe. Inside of occlusion, you're going to see that we actually do have renders out, and it says occlusion 001234, and as well as in wireframe. We have a folder called wireframe, and you can see that we have renders called wireframe 01, 02, so forth. So that is excellent, and the renders look good. All right, so now we're ready to put it into After Effects. So this is the magic world of After Effects, so hopefully you have a little bit of experience with it. And what we're going to do now is just go ahead and import it. So we're going to go to File, and uh, let me just move this to the side so we can see it. File, Import, a little further in, File, Import, Multiple Files, and we're going to go to the actual folder. So ignore my desktop here. It's a little bit of a uh, of a mess, but I know exactly where the fo the files are. So here's occlusion and open that up and I select one file and you're going to notice that it actually turns into footage and I'm going to click open. That's all you have to say and then click okay again. Then since I'm doing multiple files, I'm going to go to wireframe, select the wireframe, click open, click okay, and then I'm done. So the nice thing about After Effects is that it automatically reads these as a movie. So if there is an image called 1, 2, 3, 4, it automatically can change it into a movie. So now we're ready to bring it down to our timeline. Um, just select these two and bring it down to the bottom. It's going to give you a duration. Basically, it actually reads how many frames there are, and then it gives you the time. And there you go. If I press play up here on the right, you're going to see the turntable. It's a little bit slow, and that's because of the RAM speed and all that fun stuff, but uh, but you can see that it's actually working. Now I'm going to press stop, and the little green bar means that it's loaded, and now you can see how, how quickly it is moving. All right, so now we need to know, uh, we need to put the wireframe on top. So select your wireframe, bring it to the top, and now you can see that the wireframe is on top. Let me zoom in so we can see the quality. Pressing spacebar will give you the, the little hand to move around, just like in Photoshop. So basically, After Effects is like Photoshop that's animated, so it's really nice. Okay, so uh, here's the wireframe, and we need to actually be able to see the occlusion underneath it. So to do that, we're going to go over here into the modes, and right now it's in normal. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but it actually does in fact say normal, so um, let me see if I can stretch this out. Okay, anyway, it says normal, and we want to go to multiply. And immediately you can see that anything, it's basically overlaid. That uh, it's the wireframe's actually on top of the occlusion. You can actually see the occlusion. Right, so if I move it around, you can see that the wireframe follows the occlusion pretty well. Alright, so how do we make it look like it is, you know, we want to see 360 degrees of the occlusion and then we want to see the wireframe and we want it to smoothly transition from one to the other. So what we're going to work on is actually the opacity. We also need to have a little bit more time. Right now we have 12 seconds. And we just need a little bit more time so that we can actually see the occlusion first and then the wireframe. Alright, so what we need to do is basically double this. We have 12 seconds, so I'm going to go to Composition, and again I'm going to scoot this over so you can see. Composition, comp uh, let's see, Composition Settings, Oop. and down here you can see the duration is 12 seconds. So let's go ahead and change that to 24. Okay, move that back. And now you can see that we can actually have more, now we have 24 seconds. So instead of 12, we now have 24. So what I'm going to do is actually just uh, grab these two occlusion and wireframe again and bring it down to the bottom. And then these two bars, I'm going to click and drag and move them until they actually click at the very end. If I need to zoom, I can always use this little mountain here. Again, just select them over here. And then if you want to, you can actually hold down shift. I'm holding down shift right now. And you can actually, it will actually snap to the end of the timeline. So now when I drag this timeline from left to right, you can see that there's a perfect transition from the left to the right, and there is no, um, it's very smooth. 
Alright, so let's go ahead and put the wireframe on top as well. So we know that it goes to 306 degrees and then goes from 0 to 360 and this is from 0 to 360. Again, we need to change our wireframe to be multiplied. So go ahead and change it to multiply. And now it looks like we have uh, two turntables. That means that we're actually, this turntable is basically turning twice. Okay, so let's go ahead and play with a little bit of the opacity. So basically what we want is a smooth transition from occlusion to wireframe. So I know that at the end of this wireframe, my wireframe needs to be about 100% opacity. And then a little bit before it's going to be zero. So the whole time it's going to be zero and then it slowly changes into 100%. And that's going to give us a nice smooth transition. All right, so let's go to wireframe and just open up the, uh, just open up the outputs. Here, go to transform. And then you can see opacity. By the way, a shortcut for opacity is just the letter T. If you hold this down, if you click on wireframe and just click on the letter T, you're going to see that opacity shows up. So again, I want it to be 100% by the time it gets to the end of this bar. So I'm going to set a keyframe. I'm going to click on this stopwatch. Just click it once. And then you're going to move this slider a little bit to the left. And then you just have to type in the value 0. It automatically adds a keyframe to it. So don't try doing the keyframe again, because if you click on that stopwatch again, it's actually going to delete your keyframes. So the stopwatch is, is basically you turn on the, the, the animation, and after that, any type of changes you do to the values, it will automatically keyframe. All right, so again, we have a zero here. We have 100% in the second keyframe. OK, so we can see that as the timeline moves forward, the, the wireframe starts to show up here. And by the time it gets to our 12 seconds, it's at 100%. And then the wireframe on top of the occlusion continues on. And that is exactly what we want. So again, here we go. It's turning 360 degrees 100, uh, with complete occlusion. And then it slowly transitions to, wire, uh, to the wireframe. And now you can see the 360 degrees. OK, and that's what we want to see. OK, so the next part is basically to export this into a movie. To export it, we need to actually send it to the queue. So let's go up here to the top, go to Composition. Let's get this again. Composition, add to render queue. Sorry, I have very little uh, uh, real estate uh, space here. So uh, again, Composition, add to render queue. And you're going to see that we get a new tab called the render queue. We just have to go through these options to change it, and then we'll be ready to render. The first one is Best Settings. Just select Best Settings. This is the place where you can actually change the size, the resolution, all that fun stuff. Just leave it at that. No big deal. Click OK. Lossless. You click on that. This is where you want to change to what format you want. I personally like QuickTime. So just select QuickTime. And over here to the right, we have a Format Options. Uh, the best one that I've seen so far is H.264. Now, if this was for your demo reel, I would select animation. That has very little compression, but your movies are going to be huge. They're going to be like 1.2 gigabytes, so just be careful. For the school assignment, uh, you can just use H.264. Click OK. Make sure there's no audio. Click OK again. And finally, the output to. Basically, where is the movie going to go? So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to go to my desktop again. And let's see, it's in my turntable example. And um, it depends where you want to put it. Uh, sometimes I place it in render data. Or you can put it in images. It's completely up to you. Here's clips. Maybe that's a good place to put it. This is going to be my turntable. OK, click Save. And then you click Render. So this might take a couple of uh, minutes. Uh, it is in HD. Actually, it's moving pretty quickly. Um, so basically, that's how you set up After Effects to create a movie. And I'm going to pause this video now so that it can render through, and then I will be back. The render is done, so I know exactly where I placed it. I placed it in my clips, and there is my movie. I'm going to go ahead and open it up to see how it looks. Give it a second to load. It is in HD. There it is. Let me shrink it down a little bit so that you can maybe see it. And there he goes. You can watch
watch the turntable go. You can see the nice occlusion. The quality is really nice. Everything is visible and easy to see. And there goes the wireframe. All right, everybody, that is how it works. Now you know how to create your render layers, how to batch render, and then import them all into After Effects. I hope that was helpful, and I will see you around. Take care.